How's everybody doing? Welcome back to Ass Hat Podcast on YouTube. Got a Blu-ray this time. This is the Crystal Lake Memories, Complete History of Friday 13th. This is the two-disc collector's edition. I think every one of these is a two-disc, so I don't know why they distinguish that. Real simple. Back around the time of the Friday 13th remake, matter of fact, it was right before it, a little documentary came out called His Name is Jason. I'm pretty sure Anchor Bay had something to do with that. Hosted by Tom Savini. It was okay. At the time it was pretty entertaining, but there was so much left out. Well, not long after that, a book came out called Chris Lake Memories. Was the author sat, the author or authors, I don't remember if there was one or more, sat down and pretty much tracked down everybody he could find that worked on any of the movies, going from the first one all the way up to the remake. And interviewed him. It's a really good book that I sadly think is out of print now. I got it from my local library. Then they put out this documentary, which is two Blu-rays. One of them's four hours, one of them's three. So you got like seven hours on the Friday 13th, and they go in all kinds of detail. And it's kind of neat to go back to some of the locations to shoot, like um, Friday 13th Part 3, they go back to that one. Um, the one I wish they'd done it was Friday 13th Part 3. I wish they'd went on location on that, because that was filmed in Alabama, not too far from where I grew up. Didn't know it at the time. Didn't know they were filming Part 7, because I was yeah, in junior high, probably when 7 came out. But, you know, what is there to say? It's Friday 13th film. I mean, I love slashers, always have. I, I grew up in that right time frame. You know, I was born in the mid 70s, so I was, you know, the right age where I really got into the slasher series. Matter of fact, part of what prompted my family to get a VHS VCR, because we had a Betamax at first, was I couldn't rent a lot of the movies I wanted to see on Betamax, and I managed to talk my parents into getting a VHS player so I could watch the Friday 13th, because at the time, the only video store to still carry beta had like the first couple of Friday 13th of beta, and that was it. But there's so much. I mean, this is hosted by uh, Corey Feldman. And there's a few little extras and some deleted scenes. But the neat thing is that there's a commentary on this by the director of the documentary and the author that goes over the entire thing. So you not only have, you know, roughly seven hours to watch. But if you like commentary, you got another set of 14 hours. And the neat thing was, this will tell when I'm filming this, this came in, I got this in on July 13th, which was a Friday, and sat down and watched the entire thing in one day. I put it on and just plowed there. And I'd seen it before. I saw it Whew. right after it came out. I got it in from Netflix. But that was the DVD version. And that's what they mentioned on here. They were only going to release this on Blu-ray and people griped. So they put it out on DVD too. And I saw the DVD version. And honestly, if it had been, if there had been a huge price difference, <laughs> there had been a huge price difference between the DVD and the Blu-ray, I would have just went and got the DVD because it's a documentary. I don't really cared. I'm, like, I'm not a Blu-ray snob. I'm not one of these people that will only buy Blu-rays now, you know, spends you know, buy shit like, you know, Modern Family on Blu-ray. Really? Do you need to see that in high def? Really? It works just as good in standard definition, you know? I'm kind of picky with my Blu-rays. But this one, it was the same price or maybe a buck more. So I, I'll take a chance. It was brand new when I got it. It's put out by who? Image, I think? Let me see. RLJ Entertainment image distributed by image probably definitely if you're a fire, if you're a jason fan definitely worth tracking this out and there's some stuff in here i didn't know like i did not know that originally part three was gonna be um uh, amy Steele and like a nut house um feel a little small thing like i knew they talk about how um parts mm, damn sorry Part six originally was supposed to be supposed to have Jason's father Elias in it, and he shows up in the novelization, which I love. I, I don't know why those have not been reprinted. There's novelizations of at least the first six, I'm pretty sure. Never reprinted, and they're going for way too much money now. Way more than I'm willing to spend on a little bit thin paperback. I'm not spending 20, 30 bucks on a paperback or more. But definitely, if you're a horror fan, slash fan, definitely worth checking out. And it's kind of neat seeing all the people from all these homes in how different they look now. Like, some of them are completely unrecognizable. It's like, okay, that's how, then whereas like Amy Steele, ah, I can tell that was her, you know. Some of you kill, some of you're like, okay, really, that's them? Uh, about the only name, the biggest name they did not get was Chris Glover, which didn't surprise me. Uh, and they didn't get, um, shit. I don't, did they get Tom Matthews? I don't remember seeing him. I don't think they did, because I remember, few years back well god it's been more than that's probably about five six seven years ago dead pit radio yeah dead pit i mentioned again fat fucker ck um did an interview with him and he really you know, he quit acting he's a carpenter now matter of fact he was working on like george clooney's house when he did the interview 
I don't think he does a lot of does a lot of images. I think he's kind of put his film career to the side. Definitely worth checking out for. It was like this was like seven bucks on Amazon. You know, you can't beat that. Seven bucks for seven hours of footage. That's a dollar an hour. Anyway, if you enjoyed this, give me a thumbs up. Leave a comment. Subscribe. Talk to everybody later. Bye bye.